worship. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
We're about to raise our offering. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. When Jesus said yes, nobody can say no.
When they sing it, they say, Say, don't fall down from the ground and you have to let You got to mash that devil. Amen. So when they say he fall down from the ground, step on him. Yeah. Then they say, When Jesus left you, and then you sit it down. You got to stand up. Why will he lift me all this week? Yeah. You know, as I stay here today, I am the president of the Women Women Ministry. So the prophet, I know he was a little bit indecisive of the program because he started all late. So we had to get maturity, which we did. And full preparation kind of looked tough. On the eve of the full pre preparation, Satan tested the God that I served. And when we sing the song, Jesus on the main line, call him up. And the moment he tested me, then I allowed anger to come in. One good thing about me, the Holy Spirit spoke within me. And you forgot where I took you from. Then he said, I am on the main line, call me. When I begin to call, he did my guidance on the main line. Things begin to fall in place. People volunteer to do this. Then I had no growth. I said, now, nah, I hate challenges in life because I have a God I never feel. I don't fight my battle. Hey, then I went to our niece. I call her the nieces because I'm the mother of all. I said, I need a grill. She said, I got a big grill that uses propane and charcoal. But you know what? You can have it. Jesus on the mean line. What you want? Oh, my God, it's on the main line. What that problem? You go to that you cannot call your Lord. He is on the main line waiting for you to call. Now, oh, then I went at the bank to deposit a check. And you know, some of our local people are all back. I want a can and be overdrive. <laughs> so when I went to the woman. I'm overdrive. Tell me, so I get put my check in before they take it. She said, no, you got some money in here. Then my little soul who let money be there, I said, how come? He said, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Yes. Mommy, you always say you're on the Lord's payroll. He pays you according to your need, not according to your wants. And I stand on the work and I speak today. Call your God that is on the main line. He's there to answer all. What is that sickness you carry? That you depending on the doctor. He's on the main line. He's a Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. That was powerful. And guys, I apologize because of the time. You know, we're all in America because of time. We did it with time. So, the testimony, um, we just um, apologize that there will be the new testimony for the day. So, we'll call uh, Sister Roska for the um, selection. Amen. Apologize. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Amen. What Jesus did for me, you know what me say? Amen. Time is dead, but the testimony may put a come back. Yes. A church or testimony is dead. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. I just want to bless God because He did it. He did it for me last week. I can't go that way. Last week when we came for a service and prophet gave up prayer prayer. It was not easy yet. We had a woman on a job that gave people hard time. She's just there to get rid of people. And this woman is so bad. I don't care how you, you call her. I'm on a light duty. But she want to give me a full duty job. I can be starving right there. But to our point, you know what God did to her? She was to do certain appointment for one of the residents. And she made me stay two times. When we went to go back last week, they told her to pack her back and go home. Pray Jesus. Because I have not going to be the prayer here. Yes. Pro prophet offer for us to pray to bring our enemy down. And we'll be like that. Because she wanted to put me in trouble. Instead of me getting in trouble, she'll die in trouble. Praise the Lord. That was, good. That was great. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Uh, what God did for me two weeks ago, I cannot sit down and not say anything. I saw my dad dying in my hands, but I called on Jesus. I was the, 
the only person at home and uh, he was having multiple seizures and stroke so I was uh, fighting with the seizures and I call upon God and God has come as quickly as possible. God Hallelujah. was there when I called 911. They were waiting. It was a Sunday. They don't have enough staff. They were uh, uh, um, delayed to come. But God was there and in intervened. Now he's in the hospital. He's doing fine. I thank God for that. Praise the Lord. He is great. He's wonderful. He do the unthinkable. Now we'll ask the rest God to come give us a lesson. Before then, I will see all testimony I will give you today in the blood of Jesus. I ask the Lord, you give more testimony for those that I'm going to give today. As you see it in the blood of Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. So rest God, put your hands together for her.
Y lo cual se está muy bien Lo que vamos a hacer
Today, while we are sitting in the car, I told her, I said, uh, what the Lord put in my spirit is that in this vicinity, for this church to achieve what God wants her to achieve, her worship must be lifted high. Her worship must be accurate. Is that what I said, man? And uh, God is still perfecting what he wants to do. Amen. Amen. And I want to talk to the technical team. Uh, there needs to be some training because um, sound is one thing that is respected in the spirit realm. Yes. And when the sound is distorted, the things that God wants to do becomes distorted. Yes. Uh, I pray that those, even those that are singing, it's not enough to sing, but it is good to sing in unity and to sing with excellence. Amen. Uh, God brought and cited this church here for the purpose. Yes. And that purpose must be fulfilled. Yes. But for the purpose to be fulfilled, the people need to enter into the into an alignment with what the Spirit of God is doing in the hour and it is by raising the standard of the sound. Yes. Praise God. Amen. The Lord will help you and I believe and I'm trusting God with the man of God that by the time you are celebrating the fourth year, yes. you can tell the visible difference. God bless you. You're all welcome. Amen. We have service every Thursdays from 7 o'clock p.m. to 9 o'clock p.m. Thursdays are a delivery service. Thursday, come, encourage people to come. 
Thursday. If you know anybody that's facing spirituality problems or having nightmares in the dream, encourage them to come. They'll come and receive their deliverance and they'll know there have been uh, be a touching in their life. Amen. We have service every Sunday from 11 o'clock a.m. to 2 p.m. exactly. Sunday is our time of celebration, our divine worship service. If you know anyone, if you're not a member of any church, we're really open. We invite you to come and celebrate with us. Amen. Fire plus fire. Fire. Fire plus fire. Fire. Amen. Fresh fire prayer line is still going on from Monday through Friday from 9 o'clock p.m. to 12 a.m. Amen. 12 o'clock a.m. That was a lie. From 9 o'clock p.m. to 12 o'clock a.m. Sing 
prayer, begin to pray. Begin to pray. Pray in the name of Jesus. 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 Say in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Say in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. 
Oh, stand, come, 
come and stand with me. We went to school together. And in the school, I don't know what some, some mistake or they didn't know whatever it is. They put us in one table until we finish the school. Oh, wow. You know, have one table like this, those days. And she sits by my left and I sit by my right. Anytime I'm first, she is second. Wow. Anytime I'm fifth, this she is sixth. <laughs> I don't know. I wanted to ask her, but I've never asked her. So today she will answer me. I don't know if she was stealing my work. It has, she lost it. It has never been a time. Anytime I get 15, she will get 16. I get 17, she will get 18. Amen. She never go ahead. I, all of them. All of them. I go ahead. Amen. And, uh, but she's older than me. Because I'm too, I was too smart. <laughs> when I was going to school, they keep promoting me, promoting me. So the whole class, I'm the smallest, slim, little, short. But my mom was fast. Amen and amen. amen. She is also to minister. I remember when our father started teaching us in the ministry. She was all ahead of us when she was grown up than me. But I still as smart her. Amen. 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 Uh, but she is a reverend minister. Put their hands together for her. Amen. 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 Oh, thank you. Thank you. amen. And I have my first cousin. My father comes before her mother. And some reason her mother couldn't come. Amen. She is here. For better. Nothing. So put your hands together. My mother is the true mother of her son. The true mother of her son. Amen. Her mother is the true mother. And she's also into ministry. Amen. Amen. So, as, as soon as we enter into the family, the ministry will enter into your DNA. Whether you like or not, you get to fulfill it. Amen. Amen. All the family, both men, women, all of them are in ministry. Amen. And we thank God that everyone is everywhere doing God's work very seriously. And today they spend their time with people to their church and they wanted to come and visit us. And I believe it's not only going to be today, the walking camp. Because we put super, super glue on their feet in this house. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 So, uh, when the women are beating me, I'll call them to come and pray for me. Praise be the name of the Lord. Amen. 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 We thank God. I have a very big family that I have a family. You see, like that. Amen. But sometimes you have to focus on uh, the word. Yeah. Amen. The husband and the kids. Oh, Akonta, I believe you see, in love. In love. Mm-hmm. put your hands together. Oh, come, come, come. Mm-hmm. Better go and bring him more. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Akonta, the beer has been lost, so I didn't notice you. Amen. That is a man Jesus. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Put your hands together for this one. Amen. Amen. I am beautiful than my sister. <laughs> Not beautiful, handsome. Amen. 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 We thank God for God bringing us here. Uh, three years ago, by the grace of God, I entered into this country. That wasn't my first time. I've been coming here since 2004, and uh, as the bishop was saying in 2012, I was with them in Mount Jersey, Aventon, and uh, when I came here, I saw many things that is going on, and the Lord spoke to me and said, son, this is the time, leave everything in UK, in Ghana, and everywhere, and stay here for some time, and build my people. Amen. Amen. And he gave me a team that the team is raising champions and rescuing the perishing. Rescue the perishing. I saw a whole lot of people here that they needed the deliverance and the salvation of God. Amen. 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 A lot of people were perishing. 
and uh, they needed deliverance. Mm. They needed the power of God to deliver them. Mm. And work in America here has occupied many people's life, and the devil has taken advantage to suppress and to depress and perplex people's life. So my heart was fed when God told me. And God showed to me that it will not be an easy task, mm -hmm. but it needed commitment. Mm -hmm. And I decided that God, as far as it's your work, it doesn't matter what I have to do, I'm going to do it. Amen. 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 There is no work in this world that is difficult than the work of God. The ministers will tell you. It's only work of God that can somebody can insult you free and go away. Only the work of God that somebody who is even irresponsible. And look at your face and say anything. And leave them go. It's got free. If you go and touch a soldier man, before you realize, you'll be kneeling down. If you go and touch a policeman in this country, before you realize, you're already with your ancestors. <laughs> Amen. 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 By somebody can say anything. If it is not the work of cross, we can't do it. But because our strength is not ours, it comes from heaven. Amen. Paul said in the other day, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Amen. Amen. So Paul said, It is not easy to us, it's going to be very difficult. But if you can stand to the end, there will be a crown of life. Hallelujah. I always say that my wages is not on this earth because nobody can pay me. But my wages in the heaven. Amen. Amen. That one day when the trumpet comes, that we all will wear white like this and meet our Savior God. Amen. And what I'm looking for is that day you will, you will say, well done, my faithful servant. Amen. And that is why I'm here. Amen. Not to stress out people, not what somebody can do, not somebody man, nothing. But for God to say, well done. And by the grace of God, for three years, it's not easy journey. There are so many setbacks, bad bad things, front bad things, side bad things, pulling down, subverting. Amen. 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 Apostle says something in all, we are more than a conqueror. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. May God multiply your blessing. May God multiply your blessing inside the And I thank God. Three years we are able to reach somewhere. And I believe that it's going to take us far. And what we see is just a beginning. Yes. Tell your neighbor it's just a beginning. The bishop was saying something. That so if you are in here, do whatever it takes to help for the vision to go on. Whether you have or not, God will still do it. Amen. But for you to obtain the blessings that God has in this house, put yourself together and work things out. Somebody say amen. Amen. Or oh, somebody say amen. Amen. Any of this year that God put on our heart to come here, there are some people I put on them. It's a prophet. We are behind you. We are going to go. Amen. Amen. And thank God they have fixing the place. Everything. 
some by carpets, some by televisions, and some by projectors and everything. This one I'm going to my country. I will take it. Amen. 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 And they have done so many things that I really appreciate them. Amen. I want that to use just five minutes to see these people. Somebody donate something if the person is red. And every sweat is the blood. Amen. In those days, they use their blood to do sacrifices. Anytime a sacrifice will be obtained, there must be a, a, a blood to sacrifice. Today, our blood is our sweat. Amen. And our sweat is our money. Amen. Are you hearing me, somebody? Amen. If somebody took their money, it's a great sacrifice. Amen. 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 And all of them are doing really well to maintain this place and to make sure that we are moving on. Amen. Amen. We have our brother George. He's doing a very good job. Put your hands together for that. Oh, put your hands. Raise your hand. Raise your hand. Amen. What are we telling him? What are we telling him? Oh, what are we telling him? Amen. Amen. We have, we have brother Dennis. Brother Dennis at the back of that Amen. 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 God bless you. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. And we have uh, Sister Marlene and Sister Marlene. Amen. 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 Look at your neighbor and say they are blessing us. Yeah. Look at your neighbor and say they are blessing us. Yeah. Amen. 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 And we have our sister Martha. Uh, she is our treasure now. Oh, put your hands together for Amen. 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 And we have our women's ministry president. Hey. The president herself. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Sister uh, Evelyn, put your hands up. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. And we have Sister Latoya uh, at the back over there. see them often, but they are doing a very good job. Amen. Some of them are sponsor, helping with their money, advice, and everything. We have Mr. Thomas at the back over there. Yeah. 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 He is my personal advisor. Amen. My personal advisor. Amen. 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 Everybody needs somebody. Yes. Sometimes Amen. with all the anointing, we need somebody who has been in the system for a long time. Who can advise you? Who can talk to you? Amen. Amen. To me, myself, I like my somebody to talk to me, Amen. not you. You understand it? Amen. So everybody needs somebody to talk to. You. Amen. And we have Sister Daniel, Sister Daniel over there. So you can do my very good job. Amen. Oh. Amen. We have Sister Kade. We have, we have myself over here. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And Bishop, Bishop also, his wife is here. Yeah. Put your hands together for Bishop. Amen. 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 Tell your neighbor and say, God bless you for being here. God bless you for being here. Amen. Amen. Today, something amazing. Something amazing. Amen. He's going to do something extraordinary. Amen. When the bishop came and I saw his face and I saw a very great light, Amen. and the Lord spoke to me that today that light is going to remove every darkness from your life. Amen. Because the amen is very good. The amen is very good. Amen. amen. Let's start to our feet. This year, we are going to move the ministry to another level. So before we leave here, 
the power of God in this house is going to move you to your next level. Amen. 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 Oh, amen. 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 Uh, I, uh, I almost forget Sister Davis, uh, Davis, Elizabeth Davis. Amen. I'll put your hands together. Amen. 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 Supporting also to the ministry. Yes. Uh, amen. If I didn't mention your name, maybe you are at the back over there. I can see you at the back. Rosa. Amen. Oh, Sister Ruska, our secretary. Oh, yeah. put your hands together for yeah. Sister Ruska. Yeah. Amen. Who are they? Sister, hey, Anne, 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 this is a great man of God. I've known him over the years. The word that he carries, carries power. And God has using him the whole world. We are so blessed to have this great man of God in our midst today. And I believe that you are here. You do whatever he tells you. Before you go to your house, you will come back with the testimony. I say you will come back with a testimony Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. With that wisdom, Master, let's put the hands together. Oh, we're shouting. As we welcome to the program. Send for your word and 
it never return void until it has accomplished the purpose for which it was sent for. Let your word come from today. Let your word edify your people. Let your name be glorified and cause the enemy to be terrified out of our heart. I feel myself speak through me. Let your word, O oh God, come through my mouth. May it be said that the Lord did the speaking. And even as a preacher, I hear the Lord. I give you praise that you have confirmed your word with signs and with wonders, prophetic utterances that will change our lives. We glorify and be praised. In Jesus' mighty name, somebody say, Amen. As we come to God, can you clap to Jesus wherever you are? You may be seated on the head of your own knees. We bless God for this wonderful day. I strongly believe that this is a day that God has indeed set aside even to release a blessing over our lives. If you agree with me, lift up your hands and shall I believe and receive it. And I have no doubt that before the close of this service, a testimony shall be recorded in your life. We first of all want to again acknowledge the vessel that God has used even to gather all of us today. Amen. It is it's no easy thing to hear God, number one, and number two, to respond to the call and then to follow after the call. Some, there, there are a lot of people that have been called by God. Some of you, you might be here. They, they, I, I know growing up, some of us, our parents did not even want us to have anything to do with ministry. Mm. When it, it's, it's, it's a doctor, fine. When it's a pilot, fine. When you say you want to be an engineer, they clap for you. You want to be a lawyer, they clap for you. But immediately you say you want to be a pastor, then you know you are in big trouble. That vessels of this sort have, have dealt themselves. He has committed himself to the work of ministries. I mean, consistently in this place for three years. And I believe that we need to acknowledge and celebrate him for that. Ladies and gentlemen, rise up on your feet. Stand to your feet. You want to stand to your feet. As we celebrate, as we honor, as we clap, as we praise God for the life of the prophet that God has placed over this wonderful church. Salvation Chapel International. Help me celebrate the whole world in my life. We bless God for his life. Hallelujah. And I want to encourage you, don't sit down yet. I want to encourage you, give him every support possible. This thing called ministry is a very complex thing, trust me. Church is a complex thing. Like he said, people can say anything they want to say. But those of us who are within the force, those of us who are committed to this assignment, let's render every support possible. Can you stretch forth your hands towards him and say, Man of God, we love you? Or can you say, Man of God, we love you? Can you pray the blessings of the Lord upon your life? Say, so We declare that you will live long and your heart desires shall be granted. Say, so May God keep you for us. And may God bless you for us. You see, as the Lord blesses us, we will bless you. Can you say it again? Say, as the Lord blesses us, we will also bless you. We will make sure you are comfortable so that you continue to do this great work in the name of Jesus. Let's clap our hands together and pray for his life. Hallelujah. Lord God bless you. May be seated on the head of your enemies. Amen. We bless God for his life. And I, I, on my own behalf and on behalf of my family, my church all the way from Ghana, we want to wish Salvation Chapel International a happy third anniversary. Those who are clapping, may God cause you to also receive clap. Amen. But it is not easy to be consistent for three years, and, and he has done a great job, and we want to say, God bless you. Amen. 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 We also want to salute all the men of God in the house, the bishops, the apostles, I wish I knew every name, the women of God, everybody. Let's, let's put our hands together for them. Those who are visiting, those who are with us, the Lord bless you for the great support. You are rendered for all this while. Let me pray that blessing to abound upon your life. Somebody say amen to them. All right, without well, wasting any time, you want to now carry your Bibles. I also want to salute the leadership of this church, those who are playing a role, those who are supporting the man of God, people who are workers of the church, and you are doing all kinds of things, playing instruments, protocol work, ushering, and all that stuff. I want you to know that your labor will never be in vain. It will never. That, that, that is one thing I can tell you for sure. I've been a church boy for years. 
and, and, and I know for sure anybody that labors for the Lord is rewarded some way somehow. Amen. And I know the Lord will reward you and do great things in your life. Lift your right hand and shall I believe and I receive it. Before the close of today, the Lord will honor you. Amen. Before the close of this service, your testimony shall be recorded. Amen. Three is a very significant and prophetic number. Ladies and gentlemen, the Bible talks about how Jesus died and on the first day he was still in the grave. On the second day, he was still in the grave. And I strongly want to believe that the devil was excited about the fact that Jesus was in there and he was not out yet. But ladies and gentlemen, the Bible says on the third day and we are in our third year. Can I prophesy with us somebody? What we could not achieve in the year number one. The blessings that were not available and accessible in the year number two. I declare that our salvation chapel celebrate the year number three. May the Lord bless you out. I say may the Lord bless you out. Your business arise. Your finances arise. Your marriage arise. Your relationships arise. Whatever you put your hands you shall be profitable. Lift your right and shall I believe. Says in the same power that raises Jesus up from the dead, dwelleth in us, is a quicken our mortal body. Lift your hand and shout, I'm coming up again. You shall have been, you shall have coming up again. The resurrection power is raising you up in the name of Jesus. On the third day, he rose up from the grave. The Bible says, and they put a stone on the tomb, and on their mind, they thought that would be a preventive measure that would stop Jesus from coming out. But ladies and gentlemen, in spite of the heaviness of the stone, Jesus came out of the sea. And I prophesy over somebody, no matter what the devil has used against your life, I said you will come out. I said you will come out. I said you will come out. You will come out of every trouble. Every work of the enemy against your life is getting broken. Can you lift your hands and shout, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming out in the name of Jesus. Number three is significant. That is why even with God, we have the Trinity, we have God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. I make a prophetic decree with a salvation chapel international, and everybody that is connected and acquainted to this ministry, that as we celebrate the death anniversary, no more limitations over your life. I said no more limitations over your life. and David said is there yet in 
that is left in the house of Saul, that I may show him the kindness. I may show him kindness for Jonathan's sake. Take notice of that. There's a very heavy statement. Is there any yet that is left in the house of Saul that I may show him kindness for Jonathan's sake? And, and, and for me, that is a heavy statement to start this whole thing. I want to show the person kindness not because I want to do it, not because I love them, not because they are special, not because they stand out. I am showing the kindness for the sake of Jonathan. It is because I have made a statement to a man. There is a contract, there is an agreement, there is something that we came together even to agree on. And for the sake of Jonathan, it means that I don't care the state of the person. That person can be a blind man, that person can be a lunatic. In fact, it's so long as the person is alive, I am ready to offer some guidance. Can I prophesy with a somebody before I proceed the reading of the scripture? May God bless you for a reason. May God bless you for favor. Say, the right and the child, I believe and I receive. May the favor of God come upon you. May God release grace upon you. May the child, I believe and I receive. Let me finish reading the scripture, verse number two. The Bible says, and there was in the house of Saul a servant whose name was Ziba. And the Bible says, and when they had called him to David, the king said unto him, Thou Ziba. And he said, Thy servant is. Verse three. And the king said, Is there yet any in the house of Saul? Follow this carefully. That I may show him the kindness of God, the kindness of God unto him. And Ziba said unto David, uh, unto the king, Jonathan had yet a son. Talk to this. Jonathan had yet a son. And that was the most important thing. But he went further to do some unnecessary explanation. Some uncalled for explanation. Listen to what he said. He says, Jonathan had yet a son which is laid on his feet. And Ziba said unto the king, Behold, he is in the house of Machim, the son of Amiel, in Lodima. Verse number five. And the king David sent and fetched him out of the house of Machim, the son of Amiel, from Lodima. Verse number six. Now when the people said the son of Jonathan, mm. the son of Saul, was come unto David, he fell on his face. Hallelujah. And did reverence and said, Mephibosheth. Mm. And David said, Mephibosheth. And he answered, Behold, I said, verse number seven. And David said unto him, Fear not, for I will show thee the kindness. I'll show thee kindness for Jonathan, thy father's sake. And you see that again. And will restore thee of all the land. I feel like I'm talking to somebody, but let me lift up your right hand and shout restoration, restoration. Somebody shout restoration. Some of you have seen money before, you have seen blessing before, you have seen comfort before, until you find yourself in this particular situation. I hear God tell me to tell you restoration. I said restoration. I said restoration. I said restoration. Show me you the kindness, kindness of Jonathan, thy father's sake, and I'll restore thee of all the land of Saul, thy father. And thou shalt eat bread at my table continually. I'm loving some statement here. Verse number eight. And he bowed himself and said, What is thy servant? That thou shouldest look upon such a dead dog. Like as I am. A dead dog as I am. Verse number nine. Then the king called to Ziba, Saul's servant, and said unto him, I have given unto thy master's, thy master's son all that pertains to Saul and to all his house. Verse number 10, and thou, therefore, and thy sons and thy servants shall till the land for him, and thou shalt bring in fruits that thy master's son may have food to eat. But the people said, thy master's son, shall eat bread always at my table. Hallelujah. Now Ziba had 15 sons and 20 servants. Can I begin from there? Yes. Now Ziba had 15 sons and 20 servants. 15 sons 
and 20 servants. Look at me for a moment. Let's, let's digest this. The, the servant who was working in the house of Saul, he happens to be a servant that was hired to work around the place. The, the Bible says a servant has grown and found so much comfort to the extent that he was comfortable enough to give birth to 15 children. Wow. And not only did he give birth to children, but he has graduated to the place where he has hired servants to come and serve him. A servant now has servants. Mm. Is somebody in church with me? Yes. And, and the Bible says, not just one, not two or three that he can manage. He has gathered 20 servants. To come and serve him. 15 sons, 20 servants. Wow. Wow. Can I prophesy over somebody here? Yes. Whosoever is meant to serve you, that deviated and decided that you must serve him, I prophesy that before the close of this service today, as we are bringing this service to a close today, Money. 
to you that is looking for help, one of these is will be the help of others. Lift your hands and shout, that is my way, that is my way, that is my way. David now found comfort in life. Now let me quickly show you something. A lot of us find comfort in life and forget some things that we said in the past. When people are struggling, they have a way of speaking. And when they find comfort, their language changes. I've been a church boy for a long time. We see all kinds of people walk into church and at times they come so poor, tattered. They are in all kinds of pain and struggle. And at times they are so humble. They want you to pray for them. They want you to help them out. There are times you have to even give them money in addition to the prayer. Immediately things begin to work for them. They change their attitude. Can I stay here for a moment? Can we stay in this dungeon for a moment? Some of them came with nothing and it was the same prayers that we lifted here that brought them what they have and suddenly they soon soon forget. There are times we are asking them to support a project with just a hundred dollars and the same guy that was struggling for one dollar is not now ready to give it out. May God help us. David knew that there was a time his own father had even forgotten him. Could not even remember that he had a son in the book of First Samuel chapter 16. When the prophet of God was in town holding the oil in his hands, looking for a man to anoint, the Bible says his father presented all the other guys and left them in at the backsides of the desert. But can I say something to somebody? The guy that was rejected and left at the backsides of the desert became the center of attraction. Yeah. Can I prophesy? The rejected ones are coming back home. I said the rejected ones are coming back home. I said the rejected ones are coming back home. And David remembered that he had a covenant. You know, some of us, before we even came to America, you made all kinds of promises to God. Yes. I came to give you a reminder. I'm from Africa, so I came to announce to you that the promises you made when you were in Africa, when you were you were in Liberia, when you were in Ghana, when you were in Sierra Leone, when you were in Nigeria, the promises you made to God, God is watching. Some you made to men, you promised some people that if God blesses me and I find my feet, I will help you. And you have forgotten about them. Go and ask Brother Joseph when he was in prison. He prophesied to one man and told him, When you get there, remember me. Suddenly the guy found comfort and he was clapping all over the place, enjoying the, the comfort of the palace and drinking wine, forgetting that he had a guy down there that was suffering until one day. God himself. Let me tell you something. If you don't help, God will help. I feel like talking to somebody. If you refuse to help, God will help. If you don't support salvation on this place, himself will support. Are you in church? God has a way of doing it. So when the guy forgot about Joseph for two years, God himself went to the king and said, King, today you dream. And the king had a dream. And can I stay here for a moment, just for one minute? The king had a dream. And, and, and how many of you have not dreamt before? You, you dream all kinds of dreams. Some of you, the dreams you have are more crazier than the, the, the dream Pharaoh had. He saw seven fat cows and seven thin ones. So what? It's not a big deal. Some of you have dreamt it. And, and if, if some church members are writing their dreams to you as a pastor, it's like I'm watching an Indian movie. <laughs> They will tell you how they traveled to, 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 to Dubai and, and they met one movie star and then they carried them to Cameroon and, and they entered that house. There, there are times when people come to me, they are dreams. They, they are talking and your mind is not there because you are letting tired of what they are saying. So what kind of dream was so special? Let me tell you something. When God wants to work out a blessing for me, he has a way of doing it. If God says he will make you a millionaire tomorrow morning, he can do 
Child of God. 
with everybody, mess everybody up. But don't try a covenant child. And can I tell you the reason why you have a covenant? The blood of Jesus that was shed on the cross of Calvary has provided a covenant for you. You shall not die. You shall not fail. You shall not be disappointed. You will not die until your body is saved. You know the reason why you have a covenant. Lift your hands and shout, I have a covenant. British Airways, so I did transit in UK. Mm -hmm. I was in, in, in Heathrow before I got here. Mm. Now, everybody that is on transit operates in a different way. Yes. You don't behave like other people. When we arrived in Heathrow and, and the, the, the flight landed, I saw people rushing to put their bags. I was sitting down. Yeah. You know why? I have a contract with British Airways. Yeah. And they have told me they will bring me to America. Yeah. I'm supposed to arrive at America and not Heathrow. So wherever I am at that moment is none of my business. Those who have arrived can be asleep. But me, I will take it easy. Lift your so hands and say, I'll get there. Wherever you can get there today. But me, I'll buy all these things. I thank God for the house you have. I thank God for the car you have. I thank God for the job you have. Israel. This is the sea. The, the Egyptians are coming. 
on your sides at the mountain there is nowhere to go but still be still and know that I am God covenant children don't get worried the Bible says the only guy that was left around was a cripple and God said I will bless the cripple can I prophesy over somebody God sent me all the way from Accra my name is the servant of God Joshua and he said I should tell you he will bless you I said God said I should tell you he will bless you Let me read this one to you. The Bible says, and the king said, verse number three is, is there yet any of the house of Saul that I may show him the kindness of God? The kindness of God unto him. And Zeba said unto, unto the king, Jonathan had yet a son which is lame at his feet. Look at me. On the mind of Zeba, he was trying to raise an issue that would entail the promise. On the mind of Ziba, he said, let me say something that will discourage the king. Can I talk to you just about 30 millionaires who came to tell you, not for everybody. Some people are doing some things to stop the manifestation of your blessing. Some people are raising a voice of accusation. They are laying all kinds of allegations against your life. The ladies and gentlemen, whether people or not people, God said he will bless you. At times they want to raise your past. It is on the ground and, and they are working sanctimoniously, but in their hearts they don't love God. God is saying, I'm dealing with people that love me. Look at your neighbor and say, me, I love God. Tell your neighbor, I love God. I love God. In spite of how you see me, in spite of what you think about me, I love God. Deep down in my heart, I love God. I am, I am into serious outreach. I love preaching to people to win souls. And one of the things we do at times we go to prostitutes to preach to them. Yes. And I can boldly tell you, I've met prostitutes and realize they love God more than some of my church members. They, they love God. You can see. Now check out this. They, they are people who are around. And you would think that they are the people who are connected and they qualify for the blessing. But there are some people who are on the fringes. They are not in the core. And yet they are the people who love God. Yes. Ask Brother David. When someone arrived in town, check the book of 1 Samuel chapter 16. 
The Bible says, because he wanted people to be prepared for the anointing, he told the whole of the town of Bethlehem, he said, sanctify yourself. Sanctification means holiness. Yes. Then he got to the house of Jesse, and he says, Jesse, this one, I'm on no take chances. Bring all your children. Let me personally sanctify them. So the Bible says, and, and Samuel sanctified Jesse and his sons. And he was holding the oil. He said, God, I'll finish with the holiness business. It's now time to anoint somebody. All the guys that were sanctified, none of them qualified. There was one guy that did not go through the sanctification process. He was at the backside of the desert playing happy, worshiping and praising God. And when he finished with every one of them, he says, go and bring that guy who was not sanctified and let's put the oil on his head. They went and fetched the guy in spite of the discouragement and they brought him. I'll finish in Egypt. And David made statements that beat my imagination. Let me just say three things to you. Every time covenant is at work in your life, there is something that becomes obvious. Number one, it is called favor. Touch your neighbor and say, I'm favored because of covenant. <laughs> oh, I don't like the way I mean, they tell somebody I'm favored before. Can I explain what favor is? When men are at work, it, it is called labor. Yes. When God is at work, it is called favor. Yes. Can I say it again? Yes. When men are working, we call it labor. That is why we have labor forces. Yes. But when God is at work, it is called favor. Yes. And when favor is working, it doesn't make sense. God can give you what you don't deserve. God can give you what you don't qualify for. And when you are looking at a favored man, and you try to understand, it's like you can't understand. Because favor cannot be understood. I stand on this altar and declare on the third anniversary of Salvation Chapel International. Are you ready for this? Put your right hand on your head. Let favor be activated. I said, let favor be activated. Let favor be activated. In the name of Jesus. So that is number one. I'll talk to you this and I'll be out of your way. Oh, Sam preaching. Number two, thing that happens when covenant is at work is grace. He came to speak for you. Amen. I always tell people that the J in the word grace represents God. Yes. The rest is just a race. Yes. Immediately you put God in front of the race, it becomes grace. So I am not running. I am just moving. I am not running with men. I am running with God. Grace is at work in my life. You put your name on your head again. So I will say grace. is at work it produces what we call mercy yes mercy means i am unqualified mm. but i have been qualified yes. by god yes. so i'm not receiving it because i deserve it i'm receiving it because he decided to have mercy on me yes. and david understood how to work around this principle very well. in chapter 20 says have mercy upon me oh god According to that loving kindness, according unto the multitude of thy tenderness is brought up my transgressions. Because he says, Grace me for my iniquities, for I acknowledge my sins against thee. Thee only have I sinned, and then this evil in thy sight. Then he understood that it is mercy that he is into. That is why David, who was a murderer, still was a friend of God. Yes. You can't understand this thing called mercy. At the end of the day, let me finish so we can rise and pray. At the end of the day, the Bible says they went and fetched the cripple and brought him. Mephibosheth, a cripple, who was languishing in pain, was going through difficult moments of life. He never knew that God had remembered him. The Bible says, and the king made a statement, Zippa had taken over all that he possessed was enjoying the booty. Enjoying every blessing that was available. And the Bible says the king gave an instruction. He says, you, you have gone to the extent, you that is meant to serve this guy, you have married, you have given them to 15 children, and you have, in addition, 27, seven, you just like that. He says, I'm changing the verdict. From today, 
I love what is written there. And, and I pray that somebody, let me tell you something. A message can be preached, but it is your choice to grab it for yourself. So can I say this? David said, from today, I will restore all that your father had. Some of you looking at me, every, let me tell you something. Every family is blessed. Every nation is blessed. I've been to different countries. Let me boldly tell you this. Even in Somalia, there is a millionaire there. Yes. Go to Rwanda. There are rich people there. There, there, are, there are families people can just for this family they are poor, but by the time you enter, there is a rich man hiding somewhere. Can I prophesy you as somebody? The riches of your family, let it be directed to you. to pray. There is an activity that is going on in the spirit realm as far as her family is concerned. You, you have your own challenge in your family. If you are just like me, I'm coming from a very tough family. And, and my wife too, where she's coming from, they, they, they are heavy gods. If you, you have been in Ghana, there is a god called Antoine. I'm sure the Ghana woman they will understand it better. That's where she's coming from. No wonder you marry at nine years, you are looking for a child. But let me tell you something. God said I should tell you that the season is due to break the limitations and access to our God brought you to this country to establish you because I saw you standing on the platform. And suddenly I saw a lot of people coming around you. And all of a sudden they lifted up their eyes and they were looking at you standing on top. And God said I should tell you that he's raising you so that you can raise others. In fact, the reason why you are here is because you are meant to help others. You are some of the salvation. Who is right? You are right. Give me oil if you can. It's something to keep up for me, man of God. I beg you. This is about the heart of Sire. This was the guy. Really? Yes. God is interesting. Amen. Amen. Straight from your hips, Lord. Zed, they get a head shot. We are in the month of May, which is the fifth month. I see you taking some steps. Take the first one. I saw the second. I saw step number three. I saw step number four. I saw number five, number six, number seven. Then I saw you step into the number eight. And suddenly I saw January. I saw 31st to be specific. God is telling you to tell you that within a space of the year, by the time you celebrate your birth again, you will show up in your life. Hallelujah. You have been through so many things, but the interesting thing is this man you are seeing. 
Martin, he has a very good heart. I tell you, or really, stretch out your hands towards us. Lift up your voice and you're going to pray. We want to pray first of all and rescue the wife out of any trouble. You have a child, a boy. I saw something happen, and that has to do with childbirth. She will conceive again. That particular child will bring you a lot of joy. Amen. And hope. Hallelujah. But around the same season, the enemy will hide that direction. Give me what you say. Money is coming into your hands. I told you, me, I'm not a prophet. And when I see money, I see. For money, I see very clear. I don't miss money at all. It's, it's a gift. <laughs> My gift is, if I don't see anything at all, at least I'll see money. And I'm telling you, God is putting a blessing on your life. So spread for your hands. As you spread for your hands towards this one, may God put a blessing in your hands as well. Your doors are open. 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 I see something. Lift up your hands if you can. We give you glory, Lord, as we are. It's anniversary, so we will do a lot of things here. We we'll gentle. Give you glory, Lord, as we are. Yeah, we can't 
Listen to the agenda of the evil one. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We speak life. We cancel. Do not know anybody that they choose to come. We have just come. But I don't know why they heard that name again. Come to me. Who is that? Your son is Joshua. Lift up your hands. I saw something like a net casted, and I saw the thing coming from Sierra Leone. Hey. It was like a net. They casted the net like this, and I saw it coming from that direction. Uh. And the reason why I got interested is because suddenly I saw you were sitting down in your car. Come to me. I saw them release a strange disease. Strange. We said the living God that reveals him into the sound of trouble. I declare over everybody under the sound of my voice. Any secret the enemy has arranged, may it backfire in the name of Jesus. The Bible says, lest as the devil has an advantage over us, because we are not ignorant of his devices. And that is the importance of the prophetic, nothing will not be less. So that when they plan, the Bible says, and when they plan, then God will reveal it to the prophet. Then it was announced, is there somebody who is a spy who has been sending information, but they did not know that there is a God that sees all things. The Bible says the heavens are his, his, his seat, and the earth is his fist too. So you can see, lift up your hands, can I pray for you? Any device that is arranged against you, I said any device arranged against anybody in this house, we cancel it in the name of Jesus. 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 Sir, can I pray for you? God must bless you. I'm not saying he will bless you. I'm saying must bless you for your heart. And I know you have seen money. I know. I told you me when I see where money is, I know. <laughs> I know you have seen money before, but what I've seen, you haven't seen. I'm telling you. No. You are older than me, but what me have seen, you have seen. God is going to connect you. I saw you sitting down with some people and you were having a discussion. Suddenly, I saw a document being signed. And you stood up, and suddenly I realized that you were so excited, you were, you were, you were just laughing. It was unusual. And God is telling me, this is the deep season. This is the deep season. There are blessings you are meant to access for all this one, but there was a delay for that reason. Let me show you something. Come. Come. I'll pray for you today. I'm going to ask the Lord of God to do something for you. Don't joke with prophetic directions. At times it doesn't make sense. I'm a very gentleman. But when it comes to the prophetic, at times I don't understand what God is doing. There are times God will instruct you to do things. That is why when it comes to the prophetic, be careful when you are criticizing. Because at times you lose control. There is a level in the prophetic we call possession. You don't even know what you are saying. And that is when you finish and you ask, what did I say? I've entered there several times. And someone will tell you, I'm a man of God. You say, said me. Have I ever said anything? I don't know what you are talking about. But let me show you something. There is something that they did some time back, some years ago. Many, many years ago against your family. And as much as you have broken and entered into some realms, there is yet, there is yet something that must be dealt with. I saw one elderly woman what i'm talking about is many many years ago before you were born many many years ago men in your family lives they rise but then there is a particular ceiling they hate and they are not able to cross all because of somebody getting offended and making a statement i saw one woman went to a particular place Based on an offense from offense from somebody around in your family, within your family, that did something against her. It was a relationship problem. And when she went there, the person gave her, it was like a, I mean, a, 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 a mother or somebody that practices evil. And the person gave her something like I saw the thing like a, a, a shell of a snail. 
the share of a slave. And the person asked her to put that thing in water for some time after that. She should pull it out and grind it. And make a statement over the family and then pour it away. Wow. And from that particular day, they will hit a particular level and not cross. So the attacks you get, I start to get to a place where things slow down. But let me tell you something. The battle that was raised up many, many years ago, I hear the Lord say, I should tell you, you are winning that battle because of the right you have. God is using you to break that thing so that other generations can enjoy. Can you spread for your hands? There is nothing as dangerous as facing a challenge that was not death when you were during your, your, your lifetime. You understand what I'm trying to say? I remember I ministered to one woman somewhere in Cape Coast in Ghana. And God told me that she gave a coin, a coin to someone, 20 best West coin to someone many years ago, and that is a challenge. At times you wonder. At times you don't even know whether you should bless people or you should eat. Africa. When you are ministering in a white church, it's different. Now by the time you enter into this black skin, jealousy has eaten us up. People are not comfortable with others' progress. Today we are going to pray these three prayers. Favor, grace, mercy. And I'm telling you, somebody is about to enter into some realms that will put your imagination. You will see that you have never seen. I didn't come here to, to encourage you. I came here to speak the mind of God in your life. And every time you meet the mind of God, your life changes. Sit up your hands here. When you are done, I will ask you to do something. In fact, you, 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 you are a mature person. That is what the Spirit of the Lord prompted me. You understand the things of God. This white church you are wearing, when you close and you are done and you go home, I will ask you to carry a seat and you will take this same seat. Right. God's telling me to tell you that the old is coming to a close Amen. and it's starting a brand new thing in your life. Make a way. As I'm praying for this one, God is touching other people. Make a way. Make a way. Make a way. Make a way. Right? In, in, in this meeting, God is healing somebody in this atmosphere. You are receiving your healing. There, there, is, there is a pain you have been experiencing around your head. God is touching you right now. You feel the heat around it. Once I'm praying for this one, God is telling me he's touching that life. He's touching that life. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for this amazing touch. The old is going. The new is coming. Receive it. Receive it. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We give you praise. We give you the See, Let me pray for you, my dear. Let me pray for you. Where is this? Oh, he's here. Bring it. Bring it to me. Bring, it. bring my name. My name's here. Right? Somebody will wave your hands and say, Thank you, Jesus. My dear, come to me. He pray for you again. Lift up your hands. Are you in any form of pain? What is this? God loves you. Them to bring this one because once I lay hands on it, I saw somebody just came and was warning me. Come. God loves you. You are coming from a very strong background. All kinds of battles. It has taken grace for you to be alive because you shouldn't have been alive by now. Your life. I'm 92. Put that for me. Put that for me. Hala ba hala ba shiki kese. Ege ne de ha santa na na dosha na ba They are losing the battle. They are losing it. They are losing the battle. 
We strike them down in the name of Jesus. We strike them down in the name of Jesus. We test their works to the root. God is pulling you out of your hands. Where is prophet? He's gone. No. 
Let him leave the church for me. <laughs> it's not my church. <laughs> Tell him you shouldn't come. <laughs> we need to pray. We want to pray for three things. Three things. And then after that, he asked me, he says, we are dedicating this temple. We we'll deal with that as well. I will touch everybody and trust God for a release. Let the fire I see in his hands begin to yield results. In the name of Jesus. Show up in your life. In this particular year of yours, that is when you see the manifestations of some of the things you prayed about many, many years. Since you showed up on the seven, on, on, on the surface of the earth, in, in I think I see seventy six. Since that time, this is the due season, and, and and I don't know if you think what I actually go to do. There are particular years in your life. I'm not asking you to carry a seed and so. And you, I know you are supposed to show 42. Hey, hey, hey. Give me. Father, we speak a release. Thank you, Lord, for showing up. Somebody clap to the glory of the Lord. And you can rise up on your feet. Let me pray. You are not normal, not in the negative sense. Me, I'm one of them. I know I'm not a regular person. What what can kill everybody? Me. I've summer sorted with the car twice. I was in the car, it's summer sorted. And then I came out. And then everybody came and they saw how the car was damaged. They went, Where is the guy? When I was standing there. When they finished talking, I went and brought a vehicle to come and do. And they were still wondering. The top of the, the roof of the car pressed up to the, 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 the steering wheel. I'm saying this thing, God is my witness. The roof of the car to the steering wheel. And you are asking, with my height, where was I? Oh. Me, myself, I can't get it. And I was standing there. Whilst they were talking, said, hey, I'm sure he, he, they have carried him. Somebody said, I was looking at them. <laughs> you are a rare person. You are not usual. Mm. Hey. I see hey. you sitting behind a computer. Mm. And we're just working on it. And God is telling me, a time is coming, he will use you to establish something IT in your country. A hint in something that is in your heart. And number two, there is a calling on God on your life. God on your life. I don't know if you have heard it before. You might not be a preacher like myself who has left everything. Some of us, we have been arrested by God. We are not called, we are arrested. Because there are a thousand and one things I can do, yet you have to drop everything. It's not easy. Being a preacher is not an easy thing, and yet you have to do it. But there is a calling of God on your life. Lift up your hands. I pour this oil on your head to affirm His word. And I speak a release to the next level of your life. Use you as a part of contact and cancel every agenda of the enemy. As your wife gave her this instruction that she should use her age, she should put money in her envelope. She should make it three times. If she is two years, like I've been saying, she should put two dollars, two dollars, two dollars, three of them in an envelope and right behind all life. Let me tell you something. There is nothing, no amount of money that can buy your life. So when you hear simple instructions, just do it. And she will run here.
come and drop it on the altar and ask the prophet to pray for him. Amen. Father, I speak the release to the next level. Let your man servant testify even to your glory in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.